Today on Reese Dixon, we are making this adorable stuffed mummy doll. Hi everybody, it's Teresa with ReeseDixon.com back with another great Halloween craft idea. Today I'm going to be making a gorgeous little gross adorable mummy doll. And so for starters, you're going to need some fabric. I chose this um, grody kind of purple color mainly because I just had it in my scrap stash. Um, and this is, what is this? This is some kind of a taffeta, but um, like I said, I just had it on hand. Any re fabric will do, anything will do. You just care about the color. And then you're gonna cut out a little gingerbread man shape. Now, what I did was I just folded my fabric in half and I drew one side of him so that that way he would be equal. Um, but you can always go online and just Google image search for gingerbread man and get the size that you want. So you'll need two pieces of these little gingerbread men. So once you get your shape, you just need to sew all the way around him, leaving just about that much open on one leg so you can turn him right side out and stuff him full of filling. So you can do this by hand really easily. You can do it on the machine if you've got one handy, just a quick little running stitch. Um, this fabric tends to fray, so I do, uh, I'd leave myself a good seam allowance. Um, but if your fabric doesn't fray, if you're using like a wool or a felt or something, um, then you can just do whatever you want. You can just like whip stitch around the whole thing and call it good. So let me sew this and I'll show you what it looks like turned inside out. Here's my wonky little mummy shape. And the wonkiness just works for this project. So don't be afraid of it. Just lean into the wonkiness and you'll like it. Mummies and any of the Halloween creatures, they're not really known for how attractive they are. So just embrace the wonky. Um, when you're turning this inside out, it really helps in the corners, like here on the neck and in the armpit, if you um, cut a little snip into the seam allowance. That just gives it room to kind of bend um, and makes it so that it'll just lay smoother. So now we've got, where'd my little gap go? There it is. So I've got this gap in his hip I left and I have all of this batting, so I'm just gonna stuff it full and, um, and I'm not even gonna worry about closing this. You know, um, if you're really, really concerned, you could just toss a couple little quick hand stitches in there, but I'm gonna let his wrappings close him up and um, that comes after we stuffed him. So after the stuffing, you're gonna need to make your wrappings. So this is just some random cotton fabric I got forever ago, it was just in my stash, and it has kind of a gauzy look. And all I'm gonna do is just rip strips. So if you go with the grain, it'll just rip super easy like that. So I'm just gonna keep ripping some strips that I can wrap him with. And then sometimes it helps, like you might need to, grab my scissors here, just give it a little snip to get it started and then rip the whole rest of the way off. So since we're going for a mummy, I really want it to be kind of raggedy. That ripped effect really adds to it. So I'm going to um, stuff my little guy and keep ripping my strips. And then we gotta dress him. So let me get him ready to put some clothes on. Here's my lumpy little doll all stuffed up. Remember, I'm leaning into the wonkiness, so I don't care that his head's shaped funny. Um, I did leave a little bit of thinness right here at his uh, hip joints <laughs> so that it, there's room for him to bend and so I can sit him places if I want to. So just you know, keep that in mind and don't stuff it so full that there's no room for movement. Okay, so now we just get to start applying his bandages. So with all of these strips that I've ripped up, I'm gonna take one and just pick a spot to start. I think I'm gonna start probably right here at the top of his head because that's a little bit tricky to cover. You'll have to go over and around his head a few times. So here I've got a needle and thread in the color of my bandages. 
and I've tied a knot at the very bottom here. So I'm just gonna come up, I'm gonna come up through his little head like that so that the knot catches. And then I'm gonna start stitching his little bandage in place. And this really does not have to be pretty. All I'm doing to stitch it is a little running stitch. So I'll go down and then back up and down and back up. And that's it. You really will be applying so many layers and you, you just wanna make sure that you're not pulling so tight it puckers. So I'm gonna give that a little fluff. So now I'm just gonna start wrapping that around again and again and again until I get to the end and I'm gonna sew that in place too. So here's my mummy all wrapped up and I left, you know, his hands and feet showing. I wish I'd left a little bit more room in the eyes so that you could see more of that gross purple fabric, but it was really important to me to get his head covered, so that was the call that I made. Um, getting around the roundness of his head could be a little bit of a challenge, so just use your needle and thread to kind of sew that down um, so that you don't have to try to, you know, get it get a flat object to stay around a round object, so use your stitches. Um, the other thing is make sure that you cover his crotch and his bum. <laughs> because it's one of those things you don't think about until you realize, oh, if that's the shape of a human, that's something you want covered. So make sure you do that. Okay, so now he's done other than a face. So I'm going to sew one on. You could draw one, you could glue on googly eyes, whatever floats your boat. But in my case, I'm going to sew one. So I've got some black embroidery thread here. And I'm going to come from the back. I'm actually going to like scoop my noodle, my noodle, <laughs> my needle down in between his wrappings and then push it towards the front. And there we go. And I'm just gonna leave a tail coming out of the back of his head. So holding that in place, I'm just gonna stitch my eyes on and a little mouth on. And again, you can use whatever technique you want. I'm gonna do a quick little French knot. I just think that it's so cute and it's going to be great to just like sit on my couches and bring a little spookiness to the rest of my decor. And it'll be just really fun to play with during the year too. I think Addie's really gonna love it. So I hope that you'll give this a try, that it was inspiring to you. I'd love to see the results if you do. Help me out by sharing these videos and pinning me and putting me up on Facebook. It's so, so helpful to me. I appreciate it so much. Be sure and subscribe so you can get lots more great ideas and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hi everybody, it's Teresa. Sorry. <laughs> Just got so itchy.